Steve, we'll go to you in regards to this defense has gone from stopping people to uh, a turnover fest. And one thing we can say about the Iowa offense, they present little threat. They've got a tight end, and that's pretty much all they've got. But they don't turn the ball over. They're risk adverse, and Ohio State was able to turn them over. There were a couple gifts involved, but also some legitimate uh, takeaways. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think Ohio State forced five of the six turnovers. The sixth one was the fumbled snap I referenced a little bit ago. Uh, Great job by Tanner McAllister. Two interceptions in this game. Um, I thought uh, Zach Harrison knocking the ball loose for a fumble. That was great. He was almost unblockable, it seemed at times, coming off the right edge against the right tackle. And as I understand it, Iowa had some young guys, some sophomores, and maybe even freshman or redshirt freshman starting on the offensive line. And I think that really kind of uh, impacted the bottom line. Uh, But yeah, we haven't seen Ohio state create a lot of turnovers, maybe five in the first six games. And then they had six in that game, or, or maybe it was six or seven in the first six games, but basically they doubled their turnover count in one game, give or take, you know, one, one way or the other. So um, I think that's, that's a positive. I think they're starting to understand what it means to get that ball out and uh, to get those recoveries and what kind of a momentum shift that can be for a team uh, to, to take over and uh, get possession in plus territory, what it means, even though they didn't necessarily capitalize on it a whole lot. Tommy Eichenberg had a pick six, uh, kind of like, well, if you guys aren't going to score a touchdown with these turnovers, I will type thing. And uh, that was that was kind of neat to see. He's played at an all Big Ten, borderline All American level so far through seven games, and that's one of those splash plays that'll help the highlight reel when it comes down time for people to vote for the top linebackers in the country. He's he's going to be up there, I think, on some of those lists. So that was good for him. Um, I, again, I think we have to the I think they're now number two nationally in total defense, which is crazy. Uh, to think about how bad they were a year ago and where they're at now. And yet, I still think you have to tap the brakes. Um, Toledo is probably still the best offense that they've played. Uh, All of the power conference offenses that they've played, uh, the five of those teams, Notre Dame plus Wisconsin, Rutgers, Michigan State, and now Iowa are terrible on offense, probably all in the bottom – uh, 40 or 50, uh, 60 maybe in uh, total offense nationally. So you really don't know what you have until you go up against a quality offense, which Penn State, as I flip through my notes here, just, just, just bear with me one second. Penn State scoring offense is 39th at 33 points a game. And total offense, they are 49th at 423 yards per game. So they are by far the best uh, uh, offensive team that that Ohio State has faced in terms of statistics. And I think that Penn State is at their best like they were maybe last week where they have great balance, where they're not leaning on Sean Clifford to go out and throw the ball to beat a team, and they're not relying entirely on the freshman uh I think it's Katron Allen and uh, Nick Singleton to go out there and uh, run over opponent opposing teams. They can get some yards and that's great, but uh, they're at their best when they're balanced. So going into Penn state, it's going to be a little bit more of a challenge, I think for this Ohio state defense. Did Zach Harrison have his best game as a Buckeye or did he just flash a few times? They kind of fooled me into thinking, okay, he's, he's making some big plays here. No, he, he, he played pretty well. Uh, I think he had pressure on the McAllister interception to start the game. I think he was right there in the quarterback's face. So statistically, he might get like a quarterback hurry on that. Then he uh, got the ball out another time. He had a tackle for loss another time, and he batted down a third down pass as well later on. So there's four pretty good plays, uh, and he probably played – 30 plays, maybe uh, 35. I don't know. I don't have the snap count in front of me, but that's a pretty good ratio, I think, because, you know, as a defensive end, you're not going to get there every play, but he was really making his presence felt, I thought. I thought the right tackle really struggled with him.